What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today there's something special going on in the world of the Long Dark, so I figured I'd do like a little bit of an extended video to just kind of show it off. I've been streaming the game over at Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming during this event, and I actually really, really like it. Uh, 2020's been a rough year on a lot of people. It's been kind of a nasty one, and I think we all kind of retreat into our, our various hobbies and and video games and you know carpentry or whatever else it is that you do in order to sort of escape that for a little bit and they've actually done a complete overhaul of the game for the long dark for halloween called escape the dark walker and make no mistake this actually is like a fully fledged mechanical reworking of the game to make it work in a horror setting and I actually think it's pretty brilliant. I've played it for about four hours now, and I really, really liked it. I, I try to... So I don't do Long Dark videos very, very often on YouTube, just because, like... I don't know. Like, I feel like I've showed, like, a hundred hours of it on here, you know what I mean? But this is actually something special, I think, and I'm actually going to be kind of sad to see it go. Uh, they've put a lot of work into this. Like, they've done voice lines and everything for this. It's kind of cool. So let's dive on in and play. We'll check it on out. Uh, I would recommend, so the, the goal of this, we'll kind of talk about that once we get started, but what I would recommend is starting out in Timberwolf Mountain. That's just my advice, and, and once I explain to you what the objective is and how you win this game mode and how you get the badges, that'll make a lot more sense. Your starting position in this game really, really matters to the point where it will get you killed. So let's dive on in. We'll start on T-Wolf Mountain. We'll see how this goes. We'll go with uh, Commander Shepard right here. I'll just name this YouTube real fast, and then we'll dive straight on in. So the Dark Walker is hunting you. If it touches you, you will die. Green fires will offer you protection. Paint glyphs to survive as long as you can. Yeah, so we've been given magical spells, basically, or like voodoo that we can put on, like runes, effectively, that we can use to hold off the Dark Walker. Uh, the lure... The Dark Walker has to chase that. He has no choice. He must go to the lure before he resumes chasing you. So you can use that for traps or to trick him if you're stuck in an area where he's, like, on you. Uh, we have the ward. Effectively, the ward will give you 15 minutes of safety so that you can kind of come up with a plan and decide what you want to do if he's gotten too close and you've gotten in over your head. We also have Dispel Fog, which is kind of special. During the course of this game mode, you can only spend 30 minutes at a time on any map. If you exceed 30 minutes, the map is flooded with poison gas and you begin dying about 1% per second. Now, Dispel Fog is one time per playthrough. You can do one spray paint that will kick back the fog and effectively, like, save your life so that you can make your way to the next zone and escape. You can never return to a zone that has been filled with the poison fog. That's important to know, which is why your starting position for this is really, really important. Let's dive on in. All right, so here we are on top of the mountain. Uh, it is always going to be nighttime in this playthrough, so you just need to accept that. We've got a glyph spray can right there. We've got a toque. We've got a flare. Let's get this done fast because we're going to get cold really, really quickly. We've got some basics here, and we also have on the nature of the Dark Walkers, the glyphs of power and their uses. Now, we're going to take that with us because ultimately the goal is that you need to find all of the notes about the Dark Walker. They are only at green campfires, and once you find all of them, you should be able to dispel the Dark Walker and save your soul. So anyways, let's get moving. We got 15 minutes till this guy shows up, and we got a lot of ground to cover. We want to get a good head start. If you don't get that head start, you're going to be kind of pushed, and you're going to be a kind of a little bit stressed, and he's always going to be like right on top of you, so we need to move. Uh, he doesn't care about collision. He doesn't care about mountains. He's going to go straight over them and at you. Uh, right now, we need to check our objective. Our objective is a campfire that's all the way over there. So that's the first place we need to go in order to get the first piece of lore that teaches us about the Dark Walker. I would highly recommend that you don't stop, that you don't kind of like break pace, that you don't burn yourself out. Just kind of go. Uh, don't worry about collecting loot. Don't worry about dying to the cold. Just move. This is a very, very different gameplay style in which hibernation will 100% lead to your death. So just keep on moving. Don't worry about if your meter goes down to cold and you start losing health. Don't worry about your thirst. Don't worry about your hunger. Grab things as you go. It's also important to note that the longer we're in a zone, uh, the poison gas meter is at the top right here. So there's 5% poison gas right now. As the gas fills in, the weather is going to get worse and your visibility is going to get foggier and foggier until it's like pea soup. You know, you're not going to be able to see your hand in front of your face once you get to a zone that's like 80% full of fog. So we may have some low visibility during this playthrough. Don't panic. It's all intended. That's fine. 
we can have a little bit of low visibility. It's probably not going to make for a great video viewing experience, but it is an intended mechanic to disorient you and effectively test your knowledge of the map, which I think this entire gameplay mode is really, really focusing on. I'm going to grab the gear over here that's inside the house so that when we make our way to the campfire over there, we'll be a little bit warmer. Our energy is a little bit low, too. We can sleep as much as we want, and the Dark Walker timer will not go down. So if we need to rest, we will rest as necessary. In fact, I may try to bust out one giant sleep before he gets here so that we're full up to the rim and we're ready to rock. Uh, I think that weight management is going to be a big enemy for you here. It's been a problem for me in my attempts to complete this challenge. But there is a Voyager level of loot on this, so you should find good stuff that will help you survive in the long term. Uh, what do we have here? Hacksaw is not helpful in this game mode, so we're going to leave it. Newsprint, scrap metal, not helpful. I will take the coffee and the storm lantern. You guys will thank me for the storm lantern later. The energy, the five-hour energy we'll take. The flare we'll take. What do we have over here? Uh, we have a revolver cartridge and a shell. That works for me. Some work pants. That's very, very nice. Uh, we've got a ski jacket right there, which is absolutely, positively fantastic. I'm going to search this for any type of stim. Aqua Pure, I'll take that. That's good. That'll help out a little bit, save us some time. Uh, let's go ahead and throw this clothing on real fast. Your timer is always running, so keep that in mind. Don't, don't waste your time too aggressively. It will cost you. All right, so our heat is up a little bit. Let's go ahead and move, and we've actually only got one down arrow right now. What I'd like to do is make my way on over to the campfire, which looks like it's right about here. You can see the campfire from like a long, long ways away. It's got kind of like a halo around it. So don't panic too much if you have trouble finding it. It should sort of guide you along your way. All right, there's our campfire up off in the distance. You can see it glowing with its eerie kind of pumpkin land light over here. I don't know, dude, it kind of reminds me of all the fluorescent lights and whatnot from the Oogie Boogie song when you're, when you're watching Nightmare Before Christmas. Let's get on over here. There's always good loot right next to these so like it's not a bad idea to hit them anyways just because not not only because they're your objective but because like they should have some pretty top tier loot next to each one of these it's not randomly generated so the timberwolf mountain one always has a flare gun uh the one at pleasant valley i don't remember what it has the one in mystery lake i think always has a bearskin bedroll grab as much of this as i can we're warded for right now all of that stuff is good give me the flares because we're going to need some light we'll grab these okay we got the glyph right there there's our diary page. Oh, I picked it up on accident. Let's take this on over. There we go. We'll select this and our diary page. I discarded the far-sighted mask and only bone remains. The gate is closed. Will it come for me now? Yeah, somebody messed around with them dark primal forces that they shouldn't have done messed around with. All right, so we need to kind of head back over this way. And we need to do it quickly. I'm going to get a big sleep in before the Dark Walker gets here. And then we're going to make our way to Pleasant Valley. Hopefully hit the farmhouse. If not the farmhouse, at least the barn. And if we can hit the barn, I'll be pretty happy. There's another campfire there that we're going to need to be aware of. So, you know, I, I think we have a good run going right now. we got about seven minutes left till this guy shows up. And then from there, it's going to get a little bit spoopy out here. Let me tell you what. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get a little bit intense out here. Even though it's a detour that I don't particularly want to take, I think I'm going to go after this fishing shack, and then we'll cut from that way over to there. We're not going to worry about cattails or anything. We've got an MRE, which is going to last us at least a day's worth of food, which is great. That's really, really good. I think your first challenge in this mode is to survive five days, and you get a badge for that. Some dog food. Yeah, I'll take that. We can eat that whenever we've got time. Search through the drawers. Come on. Anything? Oh, no, dude newsprint and some ketchup chips okay oh and an axe i don't know if we're gonna need the axe i'm gonna take the axe but it's kind of extra weight i may end up shedding it and get ridding it getting rid of it as time goes along because really like tools in this game like guns and axes and bows uh, they are a mechanism by which you arrive at being able to hibernate and just relax and get huge amounts of food we won't be doing that at all during this play uh, there will probably not be a single moment during this that we're not going to be in transit because really it's a tight timetable to keep uh, we're gonna sleep for let me get some water in me real fast we'll go ahead and where's my I gotta use the sort here we go we'll throw some water down all right water's down we're gonna go ahead and do a full sleep right now just so that we go into Pleasant Valley like ready to rock okay Pleasant Valley ready to rock 
Uh, we'll drink the rest of our water just to make sure that we don't have any further problems. Hopefully we don't catch an unfair wind. Uh, if we catch a bad wind this early on, it'll definitely wreck us. But I'm going to make my way towards the edge of the zone. I'll see you when we get to Pleasant Valley. We've successfully made it to the edge of the zone. In fact, we've successfully made it um, actually almost like out of the zone before the Dark Walker has actually arrived. Uh, the Dark Walker is a bit of a critter. He is a bit of a critter. I, I He's like 30 foot tall, but you'd never know it because like he doesn't have a physical appearance. Uh, he does have magical glowing radioactive footsteps though, just in case you wanted to know what that looked like, and they are quite large and grandiose. The man makes footfalls like no other, that is for sure. I mean, he might, it might be a lady, who knows? It could be like a lady dark walker. I don't know, but it wants to wear my skin and eat my booty hole, so that means that I'm running. Uh, you can stand ground and fight against some threats, and then some other threats, like, mm, not so much. Not so much, and the, and the threats of the booty hole eating variety uh, are, are the ones that tend to make me fleet a foot. We should have the exit to the zone right around here. We're very, very fortunate. Uh, we got good gear in this first zone that's actually going to make a lot of this a lot easier to tolerate. Uh, we're going to be out in the woods a little bit more successfully because of it, and it should be all right. Timberwolf Mountain, goodbye. Neri, shall I see thee again? All right, so we got about a buck 30 left on the clock right now. I'd like to get the bunker looted down here. Uh, that would be... A big thing. This bunker is kind of a major loot stop when you're on Voyager. So if I could get some new shoes, uh, maybe some gloves, something like that, probably help out a bit. Some mucklucks, really like anything. Oh, I have no energy left. I got to recharge real fast. I forgot we got to climb down a rope right here. I totally brain farted on that one. Eh. K sera sera. S O C K S. All right. I think to go down a rope, we should be all right. I don't think we'll have to worry about it too much. To go up a rope right now, I think we would be just in a world of trash. But to go down a rope, we should be good. Oof. I feel like I got out of the zone in and out faster the last time I did this. I feel like I had like five minutes left when I got here last time. I must have, I must have tarried. And tarry, I did. Oof. 30 seconds, Bunkerino. Oh, I came in on the wrong side. Well, that was a big giant waste of time. I thought I could go over the top of the log right there. Well, we got hope for the best here. I can't tell you how close he's going to spawn to me, but it's going to be pretty close. And with eight seconds left on the clock, I I'd really rather not be inside of any location. There we go. Fire that out. We'll search a locker. Some mittens. I can take that. Book. I don't really want the book. Picked it up on accident. Flares are good. I'll take flares. Energy drinks are solid. This will come in handy. Yeah, he's coming. I can hear him. He's got them footsteps. I'm going to grab that cloth just in case I need to fix something real fast. And file cabinet? Nah, we don't have time. File cabinet's going to take us too long. It's an extra 20 or 30 seconds of movement that I think it's going to cheat us out of. Okay, he's coming from that way, so we're going to want to cut out this way right here. Uh, you can kind of, like, triangulate his footsteps as necessary, just using your ears, but... We're going to do our best to, like, not be where he is as much as possible. I don't know if we'll make it out of the zone in time. We may have ourselves some problems out here. Yeah. Energy levels are looking kind of terrible. And I really, really don't like the idea of sleeping in this zone. I'd rather not. Uh, we got a road over here. Where's this going to take us out to? Uh, we're heading in the right direction. we got to go to this campfire down here. So I, I think we're in good shape. And there's not too much to worry about. He is making a racket over there, isn't he? He is a grumpy Gus. My man is coming off. He's got all kinds of words for us. Anything inside of there? Doesn't look like it. Anything inside of there? What is that? Beef jerky? Oh, bullets. That's not really that helpful. I'll take that, though. 
that's definitely appreciated. Flares are always nice, considering it's permanently nighttime and you never know where you're going to be able to see. Oh yeah, fair warning, so you don't learn this the hard way like I did. When the poison gas gets close to taking over a zone like 90%, it's going to destroy all your food. By the way, just in case, like a little bit of a spoiler alert right there, but that's a game changer. Uh, that's actually one of the reasons why I almost died at, like when I first started playing this mode is like I didn't realize I thought I could wait to like 98% to leave a zone. Uh -uh, don't do that. All your food will get wiped out and then you're going to be traveling hungry and cold and alone. I think we're okay. I don't see him. Now we are going to have to scale down this cliff, which comes with some risks. Uh, we're going to have to Skyrim our way around over here. Hopefully I don't injure myself too badly. Wasn't really the direction I wanted to go. Left is not right, but you know what? Whatever. We'll go this way. I think this should be the drop right here when we get to the other side of this little mound. Yeah. I don't think anybody's coming to save us. I think this game mode, there is no chopper, like, ready to roll. Let me drink a coffee real fast, just to help out with my energy a bit. Give me a nice little stamina regen there. I don't know if there's a faster way to get down, I'd rather do that. I really, what I really, really wish is that the camera would center on your character when you're looking at the map. I gotta look for myself each time, and that's a risk. All right, so down the mountain we go. Hopefully there's no big, giant, sheer drops. All right. Listen, sometimes traversal's gonna get hairy, all right, when you're running from a, a giant booty hole-eating monster. All right, we'll cut back over this way, and I think it should be... Ooh, that was a bit too far of a drop. I wasn't being careful right there. That was almost a mistake. I probably shouldn't have done did that. That was probably a mess. Well, there's our campfire off in the distance. We're a bit in the middle of a, the most terrifying birch forest that I've ever been inside. I don't, I don't naturally think of birch trees as being kind of threatening. The trees that I always find kind of threatening, honestly, are like palm trees at night. I don't know why, like those big, like 90 foot tall palm trees are everywhere in my neighborhood. Like they're creepy at night, man. You look up and they're just so high above you, like looking down at you and stuff. I don't know, man. I've always found palm trees to be hella creepy after dark, but maybe that's just me. Let's get to this campfire and see if we get any good loot out of here. Uh, we've put a big, big gap in between us and the dark walkers, so I think we'll be okay. I was a little bit worried about our progress. But he's still, like, back in the mountains back there, so he should be good. And he doesn't move when you're sleeping, so that's a nice fact to be aware of. I think he repositions, like, when, when you're sleeping, but it hasn't felt like he's ever closed the gap with me while I was sleeping. So as long as we can stay moving, I think we're in really, really good straights. Okay, campfire, what you got for me? You got something good, right? You got a coffee, I'll take it. You got another one of our, our glyph spray cans. We have another diary page over here. A pale river turned in on itself and a rush of blood to my head. Only the crooked path will lead me away. Okay, we'll take that with us. We got some accelerant, some rifle cartridges. I'm not going to bring the bullets. We're not going to be shooting at anything. Uh, for this end, ooh, a rabbit skin hat. Just what I okay. Need. Uh, a gun will not help you against this thing, so it's just extra weight that you've got to carry, draining your stamina, in my opinion. Uh, I would recommend leaving most of the stuff behind. we got a bunny hat right there. we got some mittens. Uh, we've got a Mackinaw right here, which is pretty sweet, so I'll throw that on. I may take some time and break down some of this clothing so that we can quickly repair stuff. Uh, that way we no longer have a heat deficit while we're trying to survive, but I haven't really made up my mind yet about whether or not I want to squeeze the trigger. Uh, wolves have been greatly diminished in this game mode, so there's not quite as many of them around. So don't worry too much about stumbling into stealth wolves. It can happen, but like not it's not frequent enough for me to carry the rifle. I usually... Reload for me, would you, buddy? I can't see. There we go. Give me a little bit of that light to play around with. I don't know why he doesn't just automatically reload after that thing goes down. 
We've got leather there. We've got an energy drink. I'll take the energy drink because that's kind of like a life-saving thing. Don't need charcoal. We'll take the cloth. I could use Don't this. need fishing lines, so that's not going to be helpful. Anything inside the vehicle over here? Uh, we've got a bandage. That would be useful just in case I get an ill-timed sprain or anything. We'll jump out of here. I'm going to have to use another flare while we're in here unless I move fast. I'm trying to conserve a little bit. Antiseptic we're not going to need, so I'm not going to take it. A bandage I will take. A flare and some chips I will take too. Don't need newsprint. Thin wool sweater I'll take just in case. What is that? A baseball cap? Don't need it. I still don't hear any footsteps, so I think we're okay. Nobody needs this anymore. Gauntlets, definitely take those. Those are nice. Nice little crafted item come up. Won't take the arrow shaft. I'm going to leave that behind. Dog food, dog food, lantern. I'm going to break the lantern down later. I don't want to carry multiple lanterns, but I do want to break it down for fuel. Since I don't think we found a jerry can in here. We did not. Okay, let's see if we can make it. Uh, we got to try and make it to the church. That's where our next stop off is going to be. If we can make the church, uh, I think that'll be pleasant company. So we'll try to make the crossing over here. And then once we've made the crossing... Uh, let me actually fuel up right now. I'm going to eat. Good. I'm going to coffee up real quick so that our stamina regenerates faster. All right. We're only losing two arrows right now when we run versus three. That's a good thing. That's what we want. Well, we're losing three right now. Maybe because our weight allotment went down because we're tired. I'd like to have the better part of my stamina meter remaining when I get to... Or I'm sorry, of my, my fatigue meter remaining when we get to the church. That way I don't have to sleep for like a full eight hours. That's going to be really hard on our water supply, and we just don't have a lot of water right now. Uh, there is going to be a toilet that we can loot inside the church to get some water. But that's what I mean when I said, like, this game mode is really kind of a test uh, of your map knowledge. And, and I feel like a lot of their challenges end up being that way. So if you're like me, a person that only plays on Interloper, which is the highest difficulty, it shouldn't be too hard. Like, because Interloper, you're not going to survive on Interloper if you, if you don't know the map. That's just, like, facts. Uh, we're going to go ahead and snap these off real quick, put those on. I've got another sweater right there to give us a little bit more warmth. We're still we're still negative on 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 heat when we're out and about, so that's a bit of a bummer. Hopefully, we'll pick up something that helps out with that pretty soon. Uh, we've got some really good gear. I have no doubt that if we take some time and we run some repairs on, on some of this gear, we'll be okay. But I guess the question becomes like, when do we get desperate enough to do that? You know, uh, they have turned off so normally in this game, you can't craft at night. Because it's too dark, you can't see. Uh, they have disabled that, so you can actually craft in the dark for the purposes of this challenge. Uh, that was really, really good foresight on behalf of the devs. And honestly, I'm actually kind of impressed by how huge this gameplay mode is by comparison to the original article. Uh, just for like a seasonal event that's only going to be around for a couple of weeks. Like I can't thank Hinterland enough in like a hard year where a lot of people are struggling to really give them something special this year. Uh, I can almost guarantee you, like, having, you know, talked to the developers numerous times, that that was more than likely their intent. They probably wanted to do something special for the fans of the game, given how, you know, a lot of people are laid up and out of work and having a hard time right now, and there's kind of a global pandemic and everything else. Like, really, we need diversion more than ever, like, just to kind of stave that off and sort of keep you from giving into despair or whatever, especially with how bad things have been. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and we're going to dive on into the church over here. And I may, I, I don't know how much time we have. I can't hear the Dark Walker. I think we have time, but I don't know. So let's take a minute. And it's going to be very, very dark in here, and I'm sorry for that. But what I'd like to do is with some of that cloth that we picked up, I'd like to fix the Mackinac. If we succeed at it, I'm going to be really happy. And if we fail, it's going to be a bummer, but we can work around it. There you go. Our Mackinaw is looking better. 
Uh, I'd like to get my ski coat up, but we don't have enough cloth for it, which means I'm going to spend even more time breaking down articles, which I don't want to do because I'm trying to shed weight right now, not hold on to it. I'm going to sort this out by, let's see here, I'm going to sort it by weight. I'm going to ditch the axe. We don't need it. I'm going to, that's 144 versus 148, so we only have a half a kilogram of material. Okay. I'm going to drop the book. I'm going to drop the firewood. We're not going to need it. Drop that right there. And while we're here... Break out this flare. Rather than using the shooty flares. Summit soda right there. That's really, really good. Appreciate finding that. Uh, there's our water for the next two days. So that's fantastic. That's going to be... A big help. I'm not too worried about looting anything that's not like mission critical right now, which is largely like food and, and like top tier clothing. Uh, we got an energy bar right there and another glyph of paint. That's good. Um, oh my god, more water. Okay. Uh, we're overweight right now though, so. If this is any good to eat. Moldy venison. Just gonna kind of grab surface loot, I guess, while we're here. Oh, new boots! I need those. Those boots are huge. Harvest these. Something's gotta go. Yeah, I'm working on it, pal. I'm working on it. These are pretty busted up, so I gotta take a chance on it, and I gotta try and fix them. Like these are in really bad shape. So hopefully this dude doesn't catch up with us, and hopefully we get a lot of successes. Hey, there you go. We've almost got them back up to perfect quality, which is going to give us a lot more heat. Uh, there was a bed at our feet, wasn't there? All right. Let's go for a full sleep right here. Get that meter refill. We're going to wake up from thirst in the middle of the night, which kind of sucks. I'm not mega happy about that, but... Oh, never mind. We're good. All right. Uh, throw you out real fast. We're a little bit overweight for right now, but I don't think that'll hold after I drink, because we're going to drink about a full liter of water. Uh, we're going to drop that right there. Did I say a half a kilogram of oil a minute ago? Half a liter. Although I guess like that's the nice thing about metric is they line up fairly exactly. All right. Uh, what else we got going on? Uh, throw the can out real fast. It's really dark. I can't see where the dam right now. I think the door is over here, though, and I think we can get out. Yeah, let's get out of here. I, I don't think we should be staying here any longer. How bad's the weather? Well, he's not close enough to hear his footsteps yet, but he's close enough to hear his roaring. Let's keep going. He's going to try to shoot the gap right here, and it may cause us problems. So I'm going to put a lure right here so that he has to go for it. All right. So he's going to get drawn to this bridge right here. Anytime he can actually hypotenuse you and, and, and cut across an area, uh, put down a lure. All right. Uh, just think about the fact that mountains don't get in his way, hills don't get... Oh, okay. That's a fairly close wolf. Yeah, go ahead and reload the blicky real fast. We got ourselves this big, beefy uh, 357. So if that wolf decides to give us an issue, I will definitely bring it to him. I'd prefer not to, but we can do it if necessary. Don't aim at him, by the way. That's not going to scare him off. In fact, the wolves will charge you on some difficulties if you aim at them. So, just, you know, relax. He can't catch us as long as we maintain a walking speed. We'll be all right. I'm going to try to avoid picking up too much more stuff, although we are going to have to take a food break pretty soon uh, once we get up the mountain. But, you know, one step at a time. Hopefully there's not another wolf over here. Sometimes there's another wolf over here that blocks the pass. And that's where this is going to get especially furry, I guess. Oh, I should have kept the moldy venison. I could have dropped it as bait. I didn't even think about it. I could fire a flare at him and run him off, I guess. Well, he may cut us off over there. I wasn't expecting to move at us. 
Uh, it'll let us know when the monster arrives at our lure and consumes it. It'll make like a loud, like magical noise, like a whooshy, whooshy, tingly chimes noise. Uh, so we'll know exactly where he is on the map as soon as he gets to that lure. Uh, that's another nice thing about that. I mean, this is really a well thought out gameplay mode. I'm actually sort of hoping that they'll leave it in. Like, it, it's a cool gameplay mode. I, I really sincerely think it is. And, and like, it's got so many differences compared to the normal gameplay experience that I think it's a shame. If it's only up for a couple of weeks, like, I really hope that it stays in, sincerely. Yeah, exactly what I predicted more or less happened. I've played this game a lot of hours. Like, I'm up in the, I'm almost at a thousand hours in this game, and you sort of learn to get a sixth sense for things that go wrong in this game. Just judging by what you're looking at and the layout and the map, when things happen, you're like, oh man, I see a possible problem on our horizon. So here comes the complicated part of all this. When we get to Coastal Highway, I think Coastal Highway, in my experience, the last four or five hours of trying out this event, I think Coastal Highway is the big noob trap that's going to kill a lot of people in this challenge. Uh, because Coastal Highway is huge, and you only have 30 minutes. And by my timing, it takes you about 7-8 minutes to get from the mouth of the cave that we're going to be in all the way to the edge of the zone to get out to Desolation Point, because there is a green campfire in Desolation Point, and we do have to go see it. And we do have to get that in order to complete the challenge. On the way back, uh, it's going to be like 24 minutes for us to make it across and over into the ravine. Uh, let's go ahead and light up a flare real fast. There we go. That looks good. Hey, another glyph. Nice. We'll take that just in case we need it. Uh, let's move fast. Let's move real, real fast. Uh, the poison gas is inside of here. And the downside is the poison gas inside this tunnel right here. Uh, counts so like our timer in here for the poison gas counts for coastal highway too like i said coastal highway i i think is going to be the great uh, i think coastal highway is going to be the great filter for a lot of players i don't need that yeah we don't need that that's fine we can leave that uh, i can't remember if it's left or right it may be both i i don't recall we'll have to keep ourselves moving inside yeah it's both okay we're good this means we're on the right path right here I don't see anything awesome. I'll take the cloth for sure. We definitely need the cloth. I'll take the beef jerky. We're going to need that too. Don't need the coal. In, in other gameplay modes, the coal might be useful. In this gameplay mode, not so much. I probably shouldn't be looting these. It's probably a mistake and a waste of time. I'm going to do it anyways, though. Oh, I wanted that. Hold on. Give it to me. I skipped over it, but I want it. All right, a little bit more cloth to play around with so that when we finally get a chance... What is that? Oh, we've got artifacting right now, like through the walls. Interesting. All right, well, up we go. Let's stay moving. That was not the direction that I wanted to go. We need to keep going upwards. Always, if you're going like into a mine, always uphill. As long as you're going uphill, it means you're going the right way, usually. Bandage, take the cloth. Bullet, don't really care. Don't really care. All right, let's keep going. We're a little bit low on stamina, which worries me a bit. I'm not in love with the prospects of having to sleep in Coastal Highway. I'd rather not, if I could if I could avoid it. Well, you know, if it happens, it happens, I guess. And there is our exit. We got lantern fuel, we got another glyph right there. I will take the revolver cartridge for wolves. Oh, that's water. I thought that was lantern fuel. Okay, I'll take it. Hey, more revolver bullets too, very nice. All right, we're not going to need this once we leave here, so, eh. We can throw it out to save some weight. It's it's a quarter of a kilogram, you know what I mean? A quarter of a kilogram that we're carrying around that we don't need to carry around with us. But anyways, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this. My name is Splattercat. I sit through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had the long dark with the Dark Walker event. I really like this event, and I will be streaming it. I do want to get the achievement on stream, and I do want to get all the badges for surviving on stream. So feel free to swing on through at twitch.tv slash splattercatgaming. I'd love to have you. Aside from that, leave a like if you wanted me to continue this on YouTube. Let me know how you feel about it, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.